My name is Jenny from the Toronto Public Library. Welcome to Mini Makers at Home. Today's experiment is underwater fireworks. This is based on an experiment done at the Mini Makers program at the Toronto Public Library, but it's been modified to make it easier to do at home with items you can find around the house. And adults, don't worry. Underwater fireworks won't destroy your house or make a mess. At least, not too much of a mess. While learning can take place anywhere, anytime, and involve everyone, I do recommend that just in case of spills, you set this experiment up somewhere that's easy to clean. With that out of the way, let's get started. To make underwater fireworks, here's what you'll need. Two narrow, see-through containers, like tall, clear drinking glasses, jars, or vases, something to stir with, like a spoon, water, cooking oil, food coloring, and a tablespoon measuring spoon. Take a look at what you've gathered. How do these things make fireworks? Let's take a moment for a science minute. Take a look around the room. What do you see? Everything you see is made of matter. The floor, the ceiling, the walls, your clothes. Literally everything is made of matter. In fact, anything that takes up space is made of matter. So air and water and even you are made of matter. But you get it. Everything's made of matter. What does that have to do with anything? Well, matter is made up of small building blocks called atoms. And the way these atoms are arranged determine the state that matter takes, the so-called states of matter. Do you know what the three most common states of matter are? If you answered solids, liquids, and gases, you'd be correct. Scientists think there are 20 other states of matter, but they don't know very much about them yet. Maybe someday you'll be the scientist that solves the riddle and figures out what those states of matter are. But what does all of this have to do with making fireworks? Let's get started and find out. And adults, let the kids do as much of the pouring, stirring, and other parts of the experiment as they can. It's a great way for them to learn, and it'll make the experiment more fun. Let's get started. Carefully fill one glass to about two thirds full with water. Now, measure two tablespoons of oil into the other cup. Next, we're going to add the food coloring. My favorite color is green, so I'm going to use green. But you can use any color you want. Just add two drops. Now carefully stir the food coloring into the oil. And take a look. Does the oil change color? Does the food coloring mix in? Why does the food coloring look like small dots in the oil but spread in the water? It's because water is able to dissolve the dye, but oil is not. Once it's evenly mixed in, Pour the oil mixture into your glass of water. How does the food coloring react in the oil versus the water? This will look really cool if you crouch down so you can see the glass from the side and just give it a little bit of time. In our video, we're going to speed it up a little bit so that you can see what happens. Okay, 
Let's reset and try this experiment again. Carefully pour out your glass into the sink or empty it out somewhere appropriate. This time we're going to take one glass and carefully fill it two thirds full of water. Measure out two tablespoons of oil into the empty glass. Last time, I added two drops of green food coloring. This time, I'm gonna change things, and I'm gonna add two drops of yellow food coloring and two drops of blue food coloring. You can add whatever colors you want. Mix it together, and then take a look at your mixture. Have the colors you added combined? Let's pour it into the water and watch what happens. Why does oil float on top of the water? This is because of something called density. Oil is less dense than the water. If you take your spoon and stir the oil and water together, they won't mix and the oil will float back to the top. Food coloring is dissolved by water, so mixes with it and can't separate. But what is density? Density refers to the amount of space something takes up related to the amount of matter it has. If you stand up and spread your arms as far as you can, imagine the room full of you and your friends standing fingertip to fingertip. How many friends could you fit in the room? Now, pull your arms in tight. Imagine you're filling the room with your friends standing shoulder to shoulder. How many friends could you fit like this? Remember when we talked about matter and matter being made of atoms? In something with a high density, like water, it's like the atoms are standing shoulder to shoulder, so you can fit a lot of atoms. In a low density object, like oil, it's like the atoms are standing fingertip to fingertip, so there are less atoms. Things that have their atoms farther apart are lighter than things that are tightly packed because there are fewer atoms in the same space. That's why oil will float in water. Water is denser than oil. If you had fun with the experiment and you want to continue on, you can try changing it up. What happens if you do the experiment without oil? Or what if you use more or less oil than you did the first time? How does that change things? And what if you switch out the food coloring for watercolors? Would that change it? See what you can change and still have the experiment work, and what you can change and it stops working. What does that tell you about the density of the materials you're using? Thank you for joining me for today's Mini Makers program. Check back soon for more Toronto Public Library Fun with STEM at Home programs. Bye bye!